one day in. We're one day in. And already we're at Evangelion is about Donald Trump. I can't believe it. So today's Saturday. I have I have a bunch of stuff I wanted to do today. You know, I'm all excited to go about my day. And then somebody sends me this article and I go, <laughs> oh, I had stuff to do today, but I can't not talk about this because it's literally my worst fears are coming true. Like my worst fear. I, I knew this was going to happen, but I had no idea how bad it would be. Now, for those of you who don't know, on Friday, Neon Genesis Evangelion, it's an anime show, came to Netflix this is a show from, I believe, 1997 was when it debuted, and it is my favorite anime series of all time. I love Evangelion. I don't know if in the back you can see. I got some figures back there. There's Ray and Asuka. I I'm wearing my hat. I, I love Evangelion. I really do, and it really is my favorite anime. I'm obsessed with the show, and I'm actually planning on doing a big video about it. Uh, we'll see if I actually end up having time. It's a large subject. To handle now the interesting thing is that there was a rights issue for the past 10 years evangelion used to be licensed by i believe ad vision which uh, went out of business you know they were the ones who had the rights to you know manufacture the dvds in english and the movies were owned by a different company and th you know this was all back in the 90s when i don't know nothing made sense every anime company was licensing anything anyway i believe ad vision went out of business so the rights in America were just kind of in flux. Nobody owned them. Nobody could produce, you know, DVDs, Blu-rays of Evangelion. So this is the first time it's been officially available in 10 years. And to me, I think it's a big deal. Like, I really do think that, you know, a new generation of people are going to experience this show. And I think this show culturally, you know, from a storytelling aspect, it is a very interesting show. And I think it's had a lot of impact on other media. You know, I know it's inspired movies like Pacific Rim and stuff like that. Just... It's going to do some stuff to the creative world. I'm really interested to see how creators are going to, you know, interpret it and, you know, what they learn from it, different different storytelling techniques that it does that I think are very bold and interesting. I'm excited, but I'm also worried because we live, as I always say, in the darkest timeline where everything is problematic, where we pick apart everything, everything's racist, everything's sexist, and Evangelion, it's definitely a show. It's got some weird stuff in it. And I was like, you know what? There's going to be, I, I was mentally bracing myself. I'm like, there's going to be some articles about why Evangelion is problematic trash, about how it probably hurts, I don't know, transgender people or poor, I don't know. There's going to be something. I was like, you know what? It'll, I'll brace myself for it. And that, that way I know, and I'm just going to ignore it, and it's going to be fine. People are going to watch my favorite robot show, and some of them are going to be complete idiots, and I just have to accept that. I, <laughs> I, didn't know, I didn't know how bad it would be. Right out the gate. We didn't make it a week. It's been, it's been what, one fucking day since it came out. And already, I, ha I had just read what is perhaps the worst interpretation of Evangelion I've ever read. To the point where I can't believe it. It reads like parody. If I was trying to write an article making fun of the people who write this kind of shit, I couldn't do as good. These people, again, they're parodies of themselves. There's you can't parody them because they're they're more crazy than the craziest person you can think of. Let's just get into it. I'm gonna show you this article. If you, if you haven't seen Evangelion, I'll try to avoid spoilers, but I I still think. <laughs> You'll see. You'll see just how ridiculous this is. Okay, this is coming to us from The Verge, uh, which is a wing of Vox Media. I don't know if you guys have been keeping up on that controversy, but YouTubers like me, we're not really a big fan of Vox right now. But don't don't let that think that that's coloring my uh, interpretation of this article. I didn't even know The Verge was Vox until I looked it up just now. They are the tech and media wing of The Verge. I guess they must cover anime as well. <sighs> okay. See, we'll see. <laughs> I'm always like, I don't know how to read these shit with a straight face. Uh, all right. Uh, I got a bright. Uh, all right. Neon Genesis Evangelion is the perfect story for this moment in history. It all has to do with courage in the face of the apocalypse. Okay. Right away, I disagree with this thesis. I, I don't think Evangelion is really about that kind of courage at all, but uh, 
Okay, let's go. This is by B. John Steven. Who is B. John Steven? I assume this is a young guy, okay? Because this literally reads like something that I would have wrote in high school. This is a high school level of discourse. I don't know how anybody can write this shit with a straight face. Uh, gamer wife B. John Steven. He has 16,000 uh, followers. So he's got to be somebody. He's got a Tumblr. All right, B. John. Let's, let's get into it. Neon Genesis Evangelion has returned for a second life on Netflix. Watching Neon Genesis Evangelion in 2019 is fascinating for a number of reasons. Namely, seeing what a new generation of people will make of the show. That's what I'm saying. That is interesting. Let's stop there. Just don't say anything else, because it's going to be stupid. But more interesting is the new world it's been released back into. The anime was always apt, but in the two decades since the original series was first broadcast, it's become the ideal anime for our time. As the series is about the courage needed to stop an oncoming apocalypse and what the people charged with protecting everyone else are obliged to cope with. Okay, again, this courage to stop an apocalypse thing is not really what the show's about, but okay, let's keep going. Here he gives the plot. The plot of Evangelion is, is simple. Well, not simple, but the, the basic premise is simple. Giant monsters are attacking Tokyo. A 14-year-old boy has to pilot a giant robot to stop the monsters. Yeah, okay. And that's that's the most broad themes of the show. It's obviously a lot more than that, but it is a giant robot show. In episode four, we find Shinji breaking down from the stress of piloting the robot and from fighting the monsters. Basically, episode four, Shinji it kind of has a mind break. He's like, why am I forced to fight these horrible monsters? I'm going to take a break. He kind of runs away for a bit, tries to find himself. Very reasonable, okay? I think if I was a 14-year-old kid and they're like, hey, go get yourself killed fighting these monsters, I'd be like, I, I need some time to sort shit out. And I'll try to avoid spoilers. This article even has some slight spoilers. But basically, he comes around. He says, yeah, okay, I'll pilot the robot. And the reason that he does it and the overall theme of the show is this idea that human intimacy is important regardless of how much pain it may cause. That's the theme. Okay, Shinji comes back to pilot the robot, not because he wants to save humanity and stop the apocalypse. He comes back because he doesn't want to lose his friends, because he wants to impress his dad, because he doesn't want to lose his foster mom figure. Okay, it's about human connections. He doesn't really care about saving the world. And that's kind of the problem with this article, as, as we're about to get into. This is, this is a nightmare. Here we go. Here's the part <laughs> where, fuck, dude. Again, I feel like I'm I'm 15 and I'm trying to impress my English teacher by just just making a big list of everything that's going on, all these deep thoughts I have. Yeah, yeah, the world's injustice. Give me an A on that paper, teacher. Okay, currently we're. <laughs> I know I'm not goofing. People are like, oh come on, you can read it. I really get like two words into this, and it's it's just it's so ridiculous to me. <sighs> currently we are. <laughs> Currently, we are facing our own seemingly in intraceable but ultimately solvable problems, much as Shinji faces the angels. <laughs> What's going on right now? It's just like fighting giant space monsters. Right-wing authoritarianism is on the rise around the globe. Cli <laughs> climate change, still unchecked, is beginning to ravage the planet. And economic inequality is more visible than it's ever been before. <laughs> None of these are giant space. They're uh, uh, all right. There are concentration camps in America, and a government agency tasked with conducting raids of immigrant families and capturing ones without the proper paperwork. The president has personally approved this. Ladies and gentlemen, I didn't think it could be done. One day in, we're one day in, and already we're at Evangelion is about Donald Trump. I can't believe it. One day, motherfucker. We made it one day, and somehow Evangelion is about Trump telling illegal immigrants, hey, you got to go to this camp. Sorry, you're not allowed in the country which is a whole other thing I'm not going to get into right now, but regardless of what side of the issue you're on, it's got fucking nothing 
to do with the robot show. Not not even in the slightest, okay? Because his his interpretation of the core theme of Evangelion is fucking insane. Let's let's try and parse it out. Shinji's episode is the hedgehog's dilemma. This is this is a thing where the idea that you know, uh, you put a bunch of hedgehogs in a cold environment, the winter, okay? And they're like, we gotta huddle together to stay warm, but the closer they get, the more they hurt each other. And that's a metaphor for human intimacy. As you get intimate with someone, you know, the ability for you to become hurt also grows. I mean, I've experienced this. Being in relationships, you get very close with, you know, your significant other, but it also gives you the ability to be harmed by that significant other if they leave you or you know, say something mean, it hurts a lot more. And that that's kind of the core theme of Evangelion. They get into it in episode four. Right away, they start harping on that theme, and it, it's a good theme. It's a good thing that drives the whole series forward. So he's talking about how Shinji returns. He gets a little bit closer to Masato, his uh, female parental figure. And watching that now is unsettling because of how timely it feels. The idea that we are required to help the people who can't help themselves is powerfully resonant. That's not what it's about. It has nothing to do with helping people who can't help themselves. That is not what the show is about. Shinji does not pilot the robot because he wants to help humanity. Okay? He doesn't really care about anyone other than the people around him. The first time he makes the decision to pilot the robot, it's to help an individual girl who otherwise was going to get put in the cockpit and probably die. So he does it out of an immediate sense of a singular person in trouble. Someone who, though he doesn't know them, is right there in his immediate vicinity. At no point is he like, I gotta save the world, I gotta save humanity. He only cares about the people in his, you know, narrow scope of view, which is fine. Cause that's what the show's about. It's about Shinji trying to build relationships with the people around him. It's not about him being like, oh my God, Trump's starting concentration camps. I got to stop the concentration camps. No, it's about these intimate relationships between a select number of characters. Them saving the world is like a side effect of the core narrative. It's not important to the plot. Nowadays, it feels like social media has turned the experience of using the internet into its own kind of society-wide hedgehog's dilemma. Private abuses can be broadcast to a global audience instantly, and that is its own terrible intimacy. What the fuck are you what are you talking about? Yeah, I've seen videos of cops behaving badly, but that has nothing to do with my relationships between me and other people in my life and whether or not we become intimate and whether or not our intimacy hurts each. What are you talking this is not how how are you possibly extrapolating this out? When children die in government-run camps for migrants, or when police shoot unarmed black civilians, we hear it through platforms like Twitter and Facebook. We're close enough now to feel the spines. No, we fucking aren't. The people I'm connected with on Facebook and Twitter, I hate to say it, they're not- we're not intimate. We're not forming an intimacy. Okay? I see these people with fucking anime avatars. I- I- there's not a person there, really. Okay? I don't hate you guys. Who follow me on Twitter or comment on my videos. I love I love hearing from you guys, but we're not in a relationship, really. I don't really know you. I don't know anything about you. We're not forming an emotional bond by communicating on social media. We're not, okay? If we want to form a real emotional bond, come to my house, we'll get a beer, okay? That's how human beings truly become intimate. Sharing videos, and by the way, don't actually come to my house. You send me a message if you want to come to my house. Don't just show up. Point is... We're not becoming intimate by sharing videos of uh, police misconduct, as, as we have here. I don't even want to watch what- it, How the fuck are you going to talk about Evangelion and then you show a cop beat- I don't even want to watch this. Yeah, okay, a cop's beating up a black guy. Me watching this, you sharing this in an article, I don't feel any connection to you, man. B. John, you having shared this on social media, me and you are not becoming close. We're not having a hedgehog's dilemma. I'm, I'm not having any sort of intimacy with you. I'm not worried about becoming close to you. I'm not worried about you hurting me. I don't care. I'm making fun of you on the fucking internet. Is how little our interaction... I, I honestly don't even think of you as a real person right now, okay? I'm just reading words on a fucking screen. To me, you're a fucking avatar. I don't, I don't even know if this is a real person. It could be a fucking Photoshop for all I know. So telling me that society is becoming more intimate because of social media... No, dude, we're getting more detached from each other. Your central thesis is fucking broken, dude. 
Shinji never becomes a righteous, unafraid hero. He can't help but be himself, terrified and powerless. Every time he enters his Eva before a battle with a monster, okay. Here is the final lesson. Intimacy is painful, but the warmth that's possible when people draw together is worth fighting for. Even if you're afraid, and especially if you feel powerless, we don't have to change ourselves to fight. The prick of those spines should spur us into collective action. You, you watch the show. I hate to be that guy. What fucking show were you watching, dude? Seriously. At what point were you watching the show and you're like, it's about people learning to band together? No. It's not what it's about. I don't want to get into spoilers. Everybody go watch the fucking show. It's about individual connections between individual people who are interacting on a very real level. And it's about accepting... That no matter what horrible things humanity might be capable of, humanity is still a thing, yes, okay, worth protecting. But it's not about banding together to stop injustice. It's about accepting the idea of injustice, okay? It isn't we have to fix the world and make the world a better place. It's the world will never be a perfect place. It will always be flawed. People will always be hurt. It's about accepting that. The fact that you took it as this thing, we need collective action. We need people to get together, band together to stop Trump. No, it's really about accepting Trump is just, you know, the latest, you know, evil in a long line of evils. If you're not a Trump fan, you think of him as evil, okay? Uh, migrant camps and police brutality, this shit's going to go on forever. And you can't go humanity is worthless because of individual things like that. You have to accept them. You, if you're really passionate about them, can absolutely do stuff about it, and you can band together and try to make the world a better place. But Evangelion isn't about that. It isn't about telling you you got to go out and really work to fix the world. It's telling you you can't solve every problem. People are going to hurt you. But no matter how much people hurt you, uh, people are still important. Humanity is still a beautiful thing. So, dude, I, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to congratulate you on one thing. You're the first guy to uh, to get out the door with the hottest of takes. You, right now, you're the gold standard for Evangelion craziness. Okay, it's this is gonna be a hard one to match. I I, I admit I don't know how you go higher than somehow connecting Evangelion to Trump's concentration camps. You set a high bar. So, uh, B. John, congratulations, The Verge. I, I don't know what they paid you to write this thing, but uh, you're the one to beat. You got the high score, and we'll see who else is coming up behind you. I, I really hope no one beats you, because this this is awful. Guys, thanks for watching. If you haven't seen Evangelion, and you're a fan of anime, and you're not a kind of person who's going to write a fucking article about how it's got something to do with concentration camps, go watch Evangelion. I'd love to hear your thoughts on it. I'm a big fan of the show. I do hope I can make a video about it, but again, the show is very dense. So we'll see if I have the time to do that. And I have a couple other videos I also have to finish. Lots of cool stuff coming soon. Don't forget to click the bell down below. I'm actually talking to YouTube because something's wrong with my notifications. So make sure that you click the bell because uh, otherwise you're definitely not going to see my stuff. Even people who have the bell clicked are missing my streams, missing my new videos. I don't know what's going on. Hopefully I'm going to get it sorted out. I'm talking to YouTube directly. We'll see. More cool videos coming soon. I love you guys. And don't ever write anything like this, or me and you will definitely not become intimate. I have no intimacy between me and B. John Steven, and I hope to God that I never do. Peace.